Greetings all landscape crafting creatives. Let's talk about ancient goddesses and their fashion accessories. You got your landscape scene, right? It's got an astronaut and everything, but something just feels a bit off. I'll explain why that is, but first, why is the sky blue? Real feeling, not just realistic, but real feeling landscape lighting is all about the interplay of the warm sun and the blue atmosphere, at least on this planet. As the white light of the sun goes through the atmosphere, it scatters all the blue frequencies all across the sky, leaving only warm light directly from the sun. The more atmosphere it passes through, the redder it gets, and that's why uh, sunsets and stuff. Lovely. That's called Rayleigh scattering, and you can literally see this with a flashlight and a glass of milk. Not joking. Anyway, CG physical sky objects try to simulate this. Light is whiter when the sun is high and it gets warmer when the sun goes lower. And visually, this is okay most of the time. Unless you have a very tall object in your scene, like a mountain for example, like you would have in a landscape scene. On a very tall mountain, the base will be experiencing a sunset, while the tip can still have much more blue light, because it's technically earlier in the day there. When this happens in the atmosphere, like so, it's called the belt of Venus. And this makes a lovely gradient that adds more colours and even more sense of scale to a scene. So how do we make this happen in CG? It's actually really very quite simple. Well, assuming you have your scene, to add this you just want one cylinder and one very simple material. Right, so this is my scene. I've turned the entire mountain white so we can see the light a bit better. We've got a warm sun and a blue sky, and it looks like it's about sunset time. And we've also got a nice uh, box of atmospheric volume going on. So let's start with our cylinder. All you need to do is make sure it is big enough to cover the entire scene. And you also want to make sure that it is about twice as tall as the tallest objects in your scene, which is probably going to be a mountain or something like that. And then just make sure it sits right on top of the landscape. I'm also going to go into caps and uncheck those because no caps are needed. Next, we will make our new material. And on that material, we want a simple color ramp. It should go from black to white, but we should also make it a vertical gradient. I'll add that to my cylinder and name it Venus. So from black to white is what we want, but in between those, we want a whole range of colors. Starting down here with a deep, deep blue color. Next, a Camelot color. And in the middle, a brandy punch color. And right near the top, a peach puff color. If you want to know the exact values for these, here they are on screen now. Now, plug this strange looking gradient into your standard material shader, into the transmission or transparency color channel. Also, go into that material, disable any other channel other than transmission, which should be at max. Make sure there is no roughness, index of refraction is set to 1, and if your renderer has the option, tell it that the object is thin walled. Now let's plug the surface shader into the beauty output. And we get this strange looking hazy gradient. Finally, I'll add an Arnold parameters tag to the Venus cylinder and uncheck everything other than shadows. Because we don't want this seen by camera, reflections or anything else other than shadows. So let's pop back into our camera and see what it looks like. The light is now changing depending on the altitude of the mountain, bottom getting a much warmer sunlight than the top is getting. And this effect is going to be even more apparent the lower the sun is in your scene. You're going to get a very natural and lovely looking sunset effect on anything tall in your scene. So adding a belt of Venus to your scene adds a lovely bit of colour, adds a bit of a sense of scale to everything, and adds just a bit extra both photorealism and feel realism. Next time we're going to pop into After Effects and tile ourselves just about any texture, but until that time, thank you for your time and stay in scattering motion. Oh. If you like
these tutorials and you want to support the work. The best thing to do is to tell every freelancer you know about the Process of Motion course. It's going to help them make better projects that are more well paid for much happier clients. There's a link to the course in the description.